Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Lana Turner, Van Heflin, and Peter Lawford in Green Dolphin Street. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is a special occasion in the Lux Radio Theater. Special because we're bringing you the star you've asked for so often in recent months. That star is the glamorous Lana Turner. And to make the evening perfect, we present her with two co-stars. One is a longtime favorite in this theater, Van Heflin. And the other is the new box office attraction who makes his first appearance here tonight, Peter Lawford. The play is metro Golden mares spectacular screen success, Green Dolphin Street in which Miss Turner and Van Heflin play their original screen roles. Based on the best-selling novel by Elizabeth Googe, it's a panorama of adventure set in the last century and one of the most dramatic love stories among recent motion pictures. It always pleases us when we can bring you stars you've asked for in your letters. Letters which so often tell us how useful you found Lux Flakes in your home. Lux Flakes is a star performer and makes possible a star performance like Green Dolphin Street. Here's the curtain for Act One, starring Lana Turner as Mary Ann, Van Heflin as Timothy, and Peter Lawford as William. Between England and the coast of France are the Channel Islands, and the harbor and the town of Saint-Pierre. It's a hundred years ago, in his rather shabby cottage, Dr. Edmund Ozan, surgeon, has an unscheduled patient. Holy Moses, bleeding like a stuck pig. Get over there and lie down. Not going to faint, are you? I'm not quite sure. Knife wounds. Oh, this means a report for the police. No, I, I don't want you to report it. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't. Well, it's a private matter. A woman, huh? And the man who carved you up was her husband? No, it's her brother. Brother. Huh. Very uninteresting. Here, take a drink of this. What is it? Whiskey. Ask two more questions and I'll drink it myself. Thanks. Well, drink it all. I've got to sew you up. This... Uh, this man with the knife. I killed him. I, I, but I, I didn't lift a hand to him until he came at me with a knife. Then it was him or me. Are you looking for you? Well, not yet. But when his body's found, I... Well, that's your concern, my friend. Now, if you're ready, I've got work to do. Uh, I've been asleep. How long? You gave me something to make me sleep. Ungrateful wretch, of course I did. How far do you think you'd have got if you hadn't had some rest? I'm sorry. What, what time is it? Ten o'clock. Who have you told about me? No one. When I came here this afternoon, there was a young man who opened the door. My who... son. Oh. Don't worry. William won't talk. What made you come to me? I'm new in St. Pierre. Or oh, didn't you know? Maybe that's why I came. This uh, man you well, killed. He was a, he was a fisherman. Bartolo, his sister told him that I promised to marry her. He chose to believe her. Ah, but the lady of your choice is someone else. This afternoon, before I fell asleep, you, you had visitors. I heard them. Two pretty girls, friends of my son. The Paterel girls from Green Dolphin Street. Marguerite and, and Marianne. You know them? What did you, you mean? What did you mean, uh, friends of your son? Is, is he going to marry one of them? <laughs> marry? My son? The richest girls in the island? Well, I've seen them together. He was with Marianne yesterday on the shore. Oh, I see. You're in love with her yourself, eh? I don't believe I've spoken 20 words to her in 10 years. She's passed my shop. I've said good morning, but she doesn't even know I exist. She'll know when they hang you. Well, maybe they won't if I can get away tonight. Ah. Well, there's a ship in the harbor. It leaves tomorrow for New Zealand. Here. It's all the money that I have. Ten pounds? I'll take six shillings, including the glass of whiskey. No, I'd, I'd feel better if you took it all. And how do you think I'd feel? I'll get out of here. 
I'll never forget you, Dr. Dozan. Thank you. <laughs> Marianne, are you still awake? Mm. I've been thinking, Marguerite. Marianne, not, not about that terrible murder. Oh, why would I think about that? I've been thinking about that ship in the harbor. Oh, it's the most beautiful ship I've ever seen. Tomorrow morning, I'm going aboard, if they let me. Marianne, I I've been thinking, too. Is it possible to fall in love with a man you've known only five days and seen only three times? Yes, I think it is. That means you're in love with William Ozan, too. No, but I could be in love with the man he could be. <laughs> Oh, isn't it wonderful that Dr. Rosanne should come back to St. Pierre after all these years? Well, it's more wonderful that he has a son as handsome as William. Marianne, whichever of us he chooses, if he should choose one of us, oh, Marianne, it must never make any difference between us. Nothing ever could or ever will. But how could William not fall in love with you? You're so, so striking and... and you have a brain. Ah, uh -huh, but you're the beauty of the family, darling. I wonder if William would want to see that ship tomorrow. Well, why don't you ask him? Yes. Yes, I think I will. First thing tomorrow morning. Well, aren't you glad you came, William? Did you ever see anything prettier? Oh, she's a fine ship, all right. What is she, Marianne? One of the new clippers, the fastest ship afloat. <laughs> Look at her name, the Green Dolphin. Ah, uh -huh, and you live on the corner of Green Dolphin Street. That's a sign, William. And what do you think you're doing there? Where are you from and what cargo? New Zealand, my pretty. Cargo of timber. Well, you've got the most perfect ship I've ever seen. Captain O'Hara, ma'am, at your service. And since you like the ship, come aboard and look around. Well, thanks, we'd like to. Um, this is my captain. Come in, come in. Well, it looks more like a museum. That's a shark's head on the wall. Maka shark. Caught it in the Tasman Sea with a boat hook. Yes, New Zealand's a beautiful country with a grand smell of the forest. A fine, sweet land with timber and flax. And wonderful pasture land, belonging to no one. There are places like that in this world, and I have to live and rot on this little island. You're a man, William. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Captain O'Hara! Captain O'Hara! I'm coming! Drunken sailor, likely. Wait here if you'd like. Thanks, but I think we'd better be getting ashore. Then good day to you both. Have a good voyage, Captain. And if you ever come back to St. Pierre... I will, miss, one year or another. All right. You better leave off the stern. The bit of trouble seems forward. All right, Mr. Wiley. What's going on here? Found this man below, sir, in the hole. Well, who are you? What difference does it make? Toss him overboard, Mr. Wiley. No, wait, please. My name's Timothy Haslam. And all bandaged up, eh? You wouldn't be hiding from the police. Yes, I am. I want to get out of this country. I like the way you look me in the eye, Mr. Haslam, and the way you speak up. All right, I'll help you. I'm a man short in the crew, my name being O'Hara, I have no love for the British police. Take him below, Mr. Wiley, keep him hid. Yes, sir. You'll be safe enough, Mr. Haslam. Yes, the English law can't reach you in New Zealand. Mr. Quincy. Yes, sir. We're lifting anchor in one hour. Oh, I can still see her, William. The green dolphin, full sail, flying like a hawk out to sea. Oh, I believe Marianne's fallen in love with that ship. She's talked of nothing else all day. Well, then let's talk about William. Ah, yes, indolent, good-for-nothing William. Well, after all, a, a man must have some sort of a career. I've told you I'm thinking everything over. Perhaps I'll be a sailor on a clipper ship, like the green dolphin. Oh, no, not on a clipper ship, William. You're going into the Navy. <laughs> really? Yes, to be an officer and a gentleman. And I'm quite serious. Now I'll be serious. I've thought of the Navy a hundred times. But my name is Ozan and not Paterell. It takes money and influence. And suppose someone found a way to provide the money and the influence? No, oh, that's just talk. Who? My father. Marianne. Oh, how wonderful. Papa, of course. And do you suppose that my father would permit that? I know he'd permit it. If it were for your good. Well, the mere idea seems to make you both exceedingly happy. And you want us to be happy, don't you, William? Oh, I'm a bad risk. Your father knows it. He's a clever man. And I'm my father's daughter. I'll talk to him tonight. Why repeat, Marianne? Going 
going aboard a strange ship with that uncouth ragamuffin. How could you? You're right, Papa. My behavior was most unladylike. I ask you to forgive me. Oh. Well, then, we'll say no more about it. Thank you, Papa. Uh, but what about William? I'll forbid him to see either you or Marguerite. Well, that might be easily arranged, Papa. You see, William wants to leave St. Pierre. He wants to go in the Navy. Well, not my problem. Well, we'd be rid of him then, wouldn't we? And when he comes back, why, he'll be a gentleman and not nearly so offensive. <sighs> but, of course, it takes influence and money. Not my money, oh, no. Mama's very fond of William. Wouldn't you like to treat William as if he were the son Mama has always longed for, but never had? Hmm. Oh, but mind you, it won't be easy. Dr. Ozan's a very proud man. Well, he wouldn't dare object. Why, it's the chance of a lifetime for William. I still think he may refuse. Well, we'll soon find out. <laughs> proud, is he? Oh, I wouldn't see him tonight, Papa. Tomorrow will do. I shall go tonight. I shall go now. Oh, uh... And take Dr. Ozan a bottle of brandy. I will not. Our best brandy, Papa. The kind you smuggle in from France. Marianne, that's a word I've forbidden in this house. Marcel, get me my hat. And a bottle of brandy. Aren't you coming down to the harbor? The Orion's been sighted. William's coming home. Well, of course I'm coming. I, I, I'm just writing in my diary. He's been gone two years, and you have to write in your diary. Well, I'm not going to wait for you. And today, William is coming home. How slowly the time has passed since he left for England and the Royal Navy College. But now, at last, William is home again. I know I'm most indelicately early for dinner, Marguerite. It's very kind of your father to invite me. Oh, he's proud of you, William. He, uh, well, he, he'll be down in a moment. And Mama and Mary Ann. Then I must make use of that moment. It's the only moment I've had with you alone all day. And since we're sailing out again tonight... Oh, such awful news, William. I thought you'd be home for days and days. Then it mattered to you? Yes. Marguerite, ever since I've been away, I, I've thought of no one else but you. I love you. May I say that? I love you. Oh, keep saying it, William, because I love you too. Well, it must be our secret, darling. Until I have the right to tell the whole world. And all the time I'm... Oh, shh. They're coming down. Uh, we, uh, we're in here, Mama. Good evening, William. I'm so sorry your father could not come. Well, his patients become ill at the most inopportune times, madam. <laughs> Your sin, William. You must ask him to give you a tonic. So oh, that's a life of discipline, Mama. The best thing in the world for a man. So, you're off to China tonight, William. Yes, it's rotten luck. Our orders were waiting here for us. Papa says that knowledge of the Orient is most important nowadays. Oh, I suppose it is, if it matters. William, let me look at you. Well? I'm most pleased with you, William. Yes, I think Papa will be very happy with his investments. <laughs> It has been weeks now since William kissed me goodbye. By now he must be in China. Centuries until he comes home again. But until he does, no one must know, not even Mary Ann, how much I love him. I'm writing this letter from a little shop in Hong Kong. By coincidence, the Green Dolphin is also in the harbor, and I hope to see Captain O'Hara shortly. Wait for me, Marguerite. This little necklace will say I have always loved you. And when I come home, I will ask your father for your hand in marriage. Thank you very much for the pen and paper. <laughs> and for speaking English. I hope Lady is pleased with necklace, sir. Sir, before you leave city, you wish to see places of interest? Well, yes, I'd like to. Oh, come inside, sir. My brother, excellent guide of city. Thank you, but my letter and the necklace... I will see they are mailed on first ship for England. This way, sir. This way. Mr. 
makes sense, Mr. Wiley. What the devil are you trying to tell me? That there's a man in your cabin, sir. Naval officer. With the smell of whiskey that would bend our mast. Naval officer? Holy saints. He staggered aboard before we sailed. Since he was a naval officer, well, sir, I thought you were in your cabin at the time, sir. Wake up. Wake up, you fool. Who the devil are you? Captain O'Hara. You drunken slop. What do you think the ship is? You you don't remember me, St. Pierre? What's that? Oh, yes. You were with that beauty, the Paterel girl. What are you doing here? Well, I, I had shore leave. I was seeing the city. They gave me something to drink No and... more brains than a flea. You've been drugged, mister. Drugged and robbed. Ha! And you were an officer of the Navy. When I woke up, my ship had sailed. I thought that perhaps you could help... You should have gone to the British Consul. Instead of that, you're now a deserter. But I can still go to the Consul. Oh, you can, eh? Five hours out at sea. What are you talking about? We're bound for New Zealand, Port of Wellington. New Zealand? And you could be worse off. You'll be safe from the Admiralty, and fine young muscles like yours will be at a premium amongst the settlers. Oh, but I'm going back home. I've got to go back. To what? Disgrace? Prison? Suit yourself, my lad. You have a long voyage to think it over. Well, Ozan, I'm ready to up anchor and leave Wellington, which means you're through with the Green Dolphin. You'll find it's a fine country here as long as you stay away from the liquor. Now, if you want more money... No, no, you've, you've given me enough. I'll find some sort of work. Keep a good heart, son. And I'll get word to your father. But not a word to anyone else. And if you ever tell the Paterels... Have no fear of that. God bless you, son. You at the bar? Yes, sir. Bring me another drink. You're from home, huh? You're new to this country? That's right. Came in last week. You got a job? Nope. Well, I've got a place up in the back country getting out big timber. You can join up with me if you like. Well, you don't know anything about me. As much as your father knew about me back in St. Pierre when he sewed me up and didn't tell the police. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember you. You killed a man and got away. They posted a reward. Your name's Haslam. Keep your mouth shut. My name's Taharuhu. The Maoris gave it to me. That's all you need to know about me. Well, the same applies to me. Well, if you come, I'll work you harder than you've ever worked in your life. You'll be in a wilderness with no one but natives, and they'll have no particular love for you. Oh, yes, one more thing. You'll have to forget that girl back home. Who told you about a girl? The same mutual friend who told me about you, Captain O'Hara. Uh, Ozan, tell me one thing. Which of the two sisters was it? Marguerite or, or Marianne? None of your blasted business. <laughs> Yes, you're right, it isn't. Well, are you coming with me or not? I'll come. Good. I hope neither of us will be sorry. Our stars will return with Act Two of Green Dolphin Street in a moment. You know, Libby, the way we associate a word or a phrase with an idea often tell psychologists what's on our minds. Oh? Suppose I say, top of the morning. What do you think of? <laughs> that you should do better than that on your Irish brogue. Ouch. No, really. That typically Irish greeting makes me think of Paramount's delightful new picture. Of course, that makes me think of Bing Crosby. Shall I go on? You can't stop without mentioning how beautifully Bing sings You're in Love with Someone. And the other wonderful songs. What a laugh-provoking team he and Barry Fitzgerald make in Top of the Morning. With Bing as a big city detective and Barry a small-town police chief. And Barry makes me think of Anne Blythe, who plays his daughter. She makes a beautiful Colleen, well-groomed right down to her toes. Well, you know, Anne is like that in real life, too. Her clothes are always perfection. The kind of a girl who carries an extra pair of stockings so she won't be caught with a run? No, no, Anne's smarter than that. She insists on Lux Flakes for her stockings, so she hardly ever gets runs. Strain tests prove nylons really do last longer with Lux Flakes. Stockings washed with strong soap or rubbed with cake soap went into runs long before those washed with Lux Flakes. The Lux stockings lasted twice as long. Luxing is easy. Those tiny diamonds of Lux dissolve in a jiffy make wonderfully rich suds that whisk away every trace of soil in a flash. And here's a tip for rainy days. If you get mud spots on heels, just work in a few dry Lux flakes with your moistened fingertips. 
Spots disappear like magic. This fine product of Lever Brothers Company protects fit, keeps colors truer, gives you so much extra wear, it's just like getting an extra pair of nylons every time you buy a pair. Here's your producer, Mr. Keeley. Act two of Green Dolphin Street, starring Lana Turner as Marianne, Van Heflin as Timothy, and Peter Lawford as William. Over two years have passed. Back in St. Pierre, Marguerite and Marianne Paterel have all but given up hope of ever seeing William again. But now in the Paterel home is Captain O'Hara of the Green Dolphin. What do you mean this letter's from William Ozan? William Ozan is dead. It's possible, but he was alive enough five months ago in Wellington. I knew he was alive. I knew it. What about him, Captain O'Hara? What is William doing in New Zealand? Isn't he still in the Navy? Due to an unfortunate incident, the lad severed his connection. Now, good day to you all. I have another letter to deliver to his father. Dr. Zahn died three months ago. In that event, I'll get back to my ship. Papa, the letter. The letter is addressed to me. Well, maybe Mama read it aloud. I will not be bullied in my own household. Oh, of course not, dear. Here, Mama, open it. Dear sir, it is a long time since I've had the pleasure of addressing you. Much has happened, but now I feel I have earned the privilege of writing. A deserter. I'll wager he deserted. Go on with the letter, Mama. I have been in the timber business for two years now. My partner is a man of great ability, and we have developed our little settlement into a garden spot with a comfortable dwelling. I don't know what life has brought you and your family, yet I cannot but hope that your daughter Marianne is still unmarried and that you will consider permitting her to live in such a rough but glorious country as my wife. As his wife? Uh, Marianne, you... The cheek of it, the conceit of the fool. You're acting as though I'd been insulted, Papa. And what would you call it? An honorable proposal, which I intend to accept. Marianne? She's right, Mama. Marianne always wanted to marry William. She'll never marry anyone else. Will you, dear? No. Then let him return here and show his face like a man. I don't intend to wait. When the green dolphin sails... I'll be aboard her. And your native friends are at it again. Well, what is it this time, Ty? Talk of war or just talk? Well, the witch doctor has just told them that a letter you wrote was delivered today on the other side of the world. Well, how could he know I wrote a... So you did write a letter, huh? Well? Yes, I wrote a letter. It's a little frightening, the things these natives seem to know. The uh, letter about a young woman, the Patterell girl? Suppose it was. I wrote it that time when I went to Wellington. I'd been drinking a lot, and I'd never have had the courage if I'd been sober. Which girl? I offered a marriage and a life like this. Which girl, I said? Marguerite, of course. Oh, Marguerite. I'd written her from China. I sent her a necklace. I told her that I... You think Marguerite will accept your offer? Oh, are you crazy? Of course not. For her own sake, I hope she's already married. Married or not, she'll, uh, she'll get an answer, won't she? Well, I'm not counting on it. You don't know her father. The Green Dolphin should return in September. Let's, uh, let's see that we're in Wellington, just in case. Now, there she lies, Miss Patterell. There's the New Zealand you're so determined to see. New Zealand? Now, hear me closely. William Ozan has no cause to expect you on this ship. The best he could hope for was a letter, not a bribe. You don't want me to marry him, do you, Captain? I told you before, the letter I gave your father was handed me by a blurry-eyed William Ozan, staggering out of a saloon. Surely it was written more in whiskey than in ink. Had I known it was a proposal of marriage, so help me, I'd have torn it to bits. If William were a fine, strong character, what would he need me for? The very reason that he sent for me is because he knows that I can save him from himself. You're bound to marry him, then? Yes. And I'll make a fine man of William. I will. I will. Well, it's here, William, the Green Dolphin. There's O'Hara out on deck. And where else would he be? He's not alone. There's a woman with him. What the devil are you... Oh, it can't be. She came, Marguerite. Look again. Marianne. 
It's Marianne. Oh, you stupid fool. Did you put the wrong name in that drunken letter? I don't know. I don't know. I must have. Well, what are you so upset about? Listen to me. Did she ever show any signs of being in love with you, Marianne? Oh, well, maybe she did, but, but I can't marry her. I'm not in love with her. Are you going to send a girl like that back home turned down by a young jackass too drunk to remember the right name of the girl he loved? No, you won't do that. She... She's looking for me. Yes, and she's going to find you. Go out there now and put your arms around her and make her feel that you want her. And remember, her name is Mary Ann. Don't worry. I'll go through with it. Marriage and all. Well, it was a fine wedding, Mrs. Ozan. There's an inn across the way. It's not too fancy, but Thank I you, think... Mr. Haslam. Oh, you know my name. Williams told me all about you. Imagine meeting a man from home. I thought I knew everyone in St. Pierre. You've nodded to me on occasions. You don't like me, do you, Mr. Haslam? I'm just anxious about you. Why? I've been very close to your husband for some time now. He's changed since you know him. Oh, for good or bad? I merely suggest that you be patient with him. Oh, I'll be patient. I have no idea that my husband loves me to, to distraction. And I did not travel halfway around the world expecting any miracles to have improved him. Believe me, I only want to help you. You can, Mr. Haslam. Is there any reason why we cannot leave for the settlement? You see, I refuse to spend my wedding night anywhere except in the home my husband has provided for me. Well, I think that might be arranged. It'll take us over a day to get there. May I see about your luggage? If you don't mind. And I'll find William. Oh, it's amazing, Marianne, what you've done with this house in a few short months. But you should let the natives help you more. I shall, William, after I've mastered their language. You really like it here, don't you? A wilderness filled with savages, a house built of logs, no companions, no nothing. I have you, William. As for companions, I can always talk to Mr. Haslam. And you don't miss home? Oh, but you must. Your parents, Marguerite? Marguerite? Do you realize you haven't mentioned her name since the day I arrived in Wellington? Uh, haven't I? Uh, tell me about her. Oh, she's well. But like so many beautiful women, she's become spiritually lazy. I don't understand, Marguerite. She's had so many offers. But I don't believe she's been able to summon the necessary emotion. There was a time, William, when I thought Marguerite was waiting for you. Uh, really? Well, what made you think that? May I come in? Oh, please do, Mr. Haslam. Oh, William, we can start loading the wagons tomorrow. With any luck, you can leave for the coast in another week. Tell me, whose idea was it shipping timber overland in those slow, heavy wagons? Why, Ty's idea. It's the only way to move timber. Don't you know that it's always cheaper to transport bulky goods by water and with a river right at our doorstep? Now, look here, Marianne. Ty knows the timber business. I'm sure he does, and I know the shipping business. <laughs> well, is that so funny, Mr. Haslam? No, not at all. I'm, <laughs> I'm just laughing at my own stupidity. You should build barges. Float your timber down that river to the sea. Well, I'm sure it's quite possible. What do you think, William? We could try it. Well, it'd take weeks to build them. Meanwhile, the natives can still be cutting timber. Actually, you'll lose very little time. Oh, it's up to you, Ty. <laughs> well, let me see if I can design some sort of a barge. We can talk some more at dinner time. Thank you, Mr. Haslam. Are you really getting those barges loaded in a hurry, William? That chute was a fine idea. My wife's idea. Huh? Because it was her idea, not yours, I suppose the two of you sat up all night arguing about it, huh? Ty, I promised you I'd stick to my bargain but I didn't agree to like it. No, you didn't, did you? Well, I'll see you later, will you? Come in, Mr. Haslam. You've come to apologize for William again? No, I've come bearing gifts. It's there on the porch. A cradle? Oh, how kind of you. Well, you carved beautifully. Well, perhaps a cradle is just an excuse, a sort of a, a peace offering. Tell me, why do you resent me so? Because you have too much influence with William. I've been able to influence William on only one thing. Not to give up when he takes on a job. Why not come straight to the point, Mr. Haslam? I failed in my marriage. And you think I'm making you the scapegoat for my failure. Your marriage is not a failure. William hates me. 
If I told you that hatred was only the reverse side of love, you'd ridicule me just as usual. It's not true. You can no more separate love from hatred than you can separate the two sides of a coin. To possess one is to possess the other. I don't want scientific explanations. Well, what do you want? What do I want? I love my husband to the point of agony. And yet there's neither brightness nor warmth in our life. What do I want? Tell me, Mr. Haslam. Have I been completely wrong in my handling of William? Or isn't it true that he is a better person? Yes, that's true. He's, uh, he's improved. Oh. But you think he'd be happier if I were more submissive and helpless? Yes. It would be a strange way to win a husband away from his own weakness by developing weaknesses of my own. Still, let me try, Mr. Haslam. My own way. <laughs> Well, the barges are loaded, Marianne. When? When do you plan to leave? Oh, we should be ready in two days. Tell me something, William. Have... Have I been a bad influence on you? Uh, no man could have a better wife. But we haven't got along. You know that as well as I do. Perhaps... Perhaps the baby will help when he comes. Oh, William, let Mr. Haslam go with the barges. Please stay with me. Cutting the timber is Ty's job. Taking it to market is mine. William, what's happened to us? Even when we're in each other's arms, there, there always seems to be a thousand miles between us. I... I know I've made you wretched, Marianne, but it hasn't been your fault. I'll do better, Marianne. I promise. Oh, William. William. We're alone, Mrs. Ozan. Not for the first time. Oh, Mr. Haslam, will you please make those natives stop that chattering? Oh, I couldn't stop them if I wanted to. That's the chant of the earthquake god. The natives believe there's to be an earthquake. And they've convinced you? Well, William doesn't believe there'll be one, and I don't imagine that you believe it either. But when your house starts shaking, stand in the nearest doorway and yell for me. <laughs> Good day, Mrs. Ozan. told you to speak English. What have I been teaching you for? I'm sorry, Mom. Now, what's going on out there? Why have the men stopped working? Earthquake come, Mom. All go to mountain to make prayer to God. I've told you exactly what to do in case an earth... Mom, come quick. Leave house. What happened? Well, you're alive. There are no bones broken. I had to bring you here. It appears that my house is the only place left standing. William. What about William? Well, they had three hours start down the river. Maybe they escaped the whole business. Anyway, you're to stay where you are, in bed. Oh, my son. I shall lose my son. Well, you'll have your son. No, no. It's too soon. Oh, Ty, please. Try to get a doctor. It'll be impossible to get out of here for days. The whole forest's been ripped to shred. There's fire and there's flood. Besides, this isn't a country where a doctor lives on the next street. My son, I thought at least I would... Marianne, have... listen to me. You will have your child. Hinemoa's all right. Between the two of us, we'll be able... No, no, no! There's no choice but to trust me. Remember, it was you who chose this life for yourself. I, I trust you. I will try to give us. As little trouble as possible. That's better. We all may be dead by morning. Meanwhile, we'll do our best to keep alive. May I come in? It's your house, Mr. Haslam. My, my, look at you. You're exquisite. That's a bit more like your old self. 
And this is no time for compliments. And please be quiet. The baby's asleep. Well, I finally got through to the next village. William. Then there's news of William. Yes, he's alive and he's safe. He reached Wellington. Oh, you're not lying. You're not just saying that I to... give you my word. Now, please, be calm. Please remember oh, that you Oh, but I won't... am calm. I have complete control of myself. It's no good, Marianne. Now, face the situation. Why not be friends? I'm not aware that we're not friends. Yes, of course. Well, I've sent out natives to find William to tell him that you're safe. Thank you. With any luck, your husband will be at your side again in a day or two. I came as quickly as I could, Marianne. Oh, my poor darling, what a time you've had. Oh, you're safe. You're here. The baby, Marianne. Ty told me. Where is he? In here, William. Only she deceived me. She's a girl. Oh, my daughter. You can tell that she's going to be fair-haired. Look at those eyes. Yes, that's why I've named her Marguerite. Marguerite Veronica. We... we'll call her Veronica. Marianne, there was a letter in Wellington from Marguerite. Your mother and father... Well, there was an epidemic. They died. Oh, no. No, but, but Marguerite, what of her? I have her letter here. She's been spending some time at the convent. Convent? Yes, it's hard to tell just what's in her mind. She seems dazed, bewildered. What should we do, Marianne? But the baby. We couldn't leave her home even if we wanted to. Is there anything left here? What does Ty say? Oh, he doesn't have to say. You must have seen for yourself. Everything's lost. Everything. But we have ourselves, William. And we have our child. We'll begin again. We'll begin again and we'll do better. Yes. Yes, I think we will. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Metro-Golden-Mare cast a young actress in an important new Technicolor musical like that Midnight Kiss without even a screen test, well, she must have something. And that's what happened to our guest of the evening, lovely Bridget Carr. Lucky is the word, Mr. Keeling. It was a thrilling experience to work with beautiful Catherine Grayson. She has a glorious voice and sings everything from opera to modern in the picture. Jose Turby, playing his famous self, makes a superb musical partner for Catherine. And isn't Ethel Barrymore magnificent? Oh, it's hard to believe she celebrated her 50th year as a star recently. <laughs> Quite a record for the brilliant new tenor Mario Lanza to aim at. But he got a fine start last week at the premiere of the picture in Philadelphia, his hometown. A musical romance with Catherine Grayson would be any leading man's delight. She's really beautiful. Her costumes, especially for the opera scenes in that midnight kiss, are stunning. Why, even her nylons were embroidered. Sounds like gilding the lily. <laughs> But I'm sure those nylons got the same gentle Lux Flakes care all the studio's nylons do. You're right, Mr. Kennedy. I was surprised how well they wore. It was so delicate. Not so surprising when you see the results of scientific strain tests, Bridget. Nylons washed with a strong soap or rubbed with cake soap went into runs long before those that were washed with Lux Flakes. Oh, I'm a Lux Flakes fan already, Mr. Kennedy. Then you know why Hollywood's most beautiful legs wear nylons washed with Lux Flakes. They fit better, last longer, and colors stay truer. These tiny diamonds of Lux whip into rich suds in a flash, freshen nylons in no time. Lux Flakes make nylons last twice as long, so it's just like getting an extra pair every time you buy a pair. Thank you for coming tonight, Bridget Carr. We return you to William Keeley. <laughs> <laughs> 
The curtain rises on the third act of Green Dolphin Street, starring Lana Turner as Mary Ann, Van Heflin as Timothy, and Peter Lawford as William. Seven long years have gone by. Seven years that have brought, out of the devastation of the earthquake, a measure of prosperity and happiness to Mary Ann and William Ozan. Still in the wilderness of New Zealand, they have reared their daughter and expanded the lumber business. And still at their side is their fellow exile, Timothy Haslam. You two should have been with me to Wellington. The town is teeming with soldiers, the governor issuing a new proclamation three times a day. You take it all very lightly, Ty. You know as well as I do that the natives are ready to revolt. Well, in any event, I saw the bankers. They'll underwrite any expansion we care to make. That is, once the natives are under control. What does that mean? Another six months? No, don't underestimate the Maoris, William. It could be years. Well, then, bank or no bank, our future's none too secure. William and I have been thinking, Ty. Perhaps it would be best if we left here and went to South Island. South Island? Well, Dunedin, perhaps. What are the timber prospects, Ty? You've been there. Fair, I suppose. Ah, but there is a great future in sheep farming. Well, why sheep? I know timber. I like the business. Why not stick to it? Because there's a bigger future in wool. How do you know? I have an instinct for these things, Ty. An instinct for making money. How much of this is your business instinct and how much the safety of Veronica? Well, it's mostly for her sake, of course. Mm Mm-hmm. In your opinion, William? That we sell out as soon as possible. Go to Dunedin. Yes, I think maybe you should. As for me, well, there's great suffering among my Maori friends caused by the colonials. They'll need help. I'm going back to them with medical supplies. But, Ty, we can't wait indefinitely. I'll not prevent your leaving whenever you like. But you're our partner. Surely you'll come with us. You don't know me very well, Marianne. I find very little value in life aside from my personal independence. That you and William should join me in my lumber business, that was one thing. That I should follow him along now like a tame tabby cat. Well, uh, that, that's another. Now, where's Veronica? Out there, playing at the river. Well, then if you'll excuse me, I'll play at the river with her. <laughs> They deserted you already, Ty? William and Veronica? Well, Veronica couldn't wait to go aboard the ship. Oh, incidentally, William left a message for you. Uh, try not to argue with me our last few minutes together. But I'm still hurt that you're not sailing to South Island with us. I thought you had a real affection for William and Veronica. I have. And for you. Then why not come? The reason I gave... But you'd be what you've always been, the central figure in the picture. Oh, I thought Marianne Ozan must always be that. I know myself better than I used to. Oh, I really don't know how I shall manage without you. So don't talk of losing your independence. A man in love has no independence worth mentioning. (laughs) Don't look so bewildered. I've been in love for years with you. How can you say that? You certainly didn't love me when I first came here. Long before that. Back home in St. Pierre. Even then, I loved your faults as as well as your virtues. Have I still so many faults? At least I'm not proud now, am I? No, you're not. And I love you for that, too, because I think that... uh, Well, I I may have had something to do with that. Yes, a great deal, Ty. Everything. You remember what I said, that you can no more separate love from hatred than you can separate the two sides of a coin? Well, you hated me because I saw too much of your real self. Then when I found you were with me, that everything was all right. So you also love me? Yes, Ty. I do love you. For you're all the man that I've tried to make William be. But I belong to William. And all I've ever wanted is his love. Yes. Well, that's why I'm not going with you. You'll have a better chance of getting what you want if he has no one to turn to but you. But I have his love. No, don't be too sure. You've made progress, but your battle isn't won yet. Goodbye, Marianne. Just a shake of your hand. Please, kiss me, Ty. I won't forget you. If I believed in souls, 
I'd say that yours and mine are a very long acquaintance. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll say goodbye to William. so sober, Ty. You should be glad to get rid of us. You know, I'd not have missed these years for anything. Not always happy years. You've made a good job of Marianne. And most people would say she made a good job of me. No, only a fool could have made the blunder that you did, sending for her instead of Marguerite. But only a man could have saved her then from disaster. Disaster? Marianne? Yes, that's the best mistake that you ever made, William. You see, if you hadn't made it, I'd really never have known her. Well, it sort of looks like you're about to cast off. Ty, I... I won't even try to say thank no, you. please don't. Good luck to you. To all of you. Oh, it's incredible, Marianne. Do you realize I stand to be the richest man in Dunedin? Oh, we should have come here years ago. Well, that's enough business talk for tonight. Where's Veronica? Asleep, I hope. Oh, she's very proud of her father, darling, and so am I. That was a wonderful speech you made at the assembly. Oh, only part of it was completely true. But whatever I may have accomplished here is entirely your doing. William, I... I want you to do something for me. You know I'll do anything. Anything? You'd sell out here and go home, back to Saint-Pierre? Saint-Pierre? But why? Because of... of Marguerite. Marguerite? But... In her letter, didn't she tell you that she decided to become a nun? Yes. Yes, she said that. But she's still a novice, William, and we can see her before she takes her final vows. Oh, but why sell out? We have everything here, the finest home in Dunedin, the chance This to... isn't really our home, William. There's that beautiful house in Saint-Pierre. It will be empty soon, waiting for us. And there's the family business that you could now run most efficiently. You've forgotten that I can never go back. There's a little matter of desertion from Her Majesty's Navy. I have a letter here. It's taken me over a year to get it. The charges have been dropped. You've been exonerated. Exonerated? Oh, think what home could mean to Veronica. The opportunity she'd have. Oh, but mostly, William, it, it's Marguerite, my own sister. You never knew what it cost me to leave home, to come out to a new country, to marry you. Oh, I want to go home, William. I do so want to go home. I... I'll make arrangements immediately. Thank you, William. And this was my room, darling. Mine and Marguerite's. Long ago, when I was a little girl like you. Oh, Veronica, tell me. You do like it here, don't you? It's just like I dreamed it would be. Oh, Mama, thank you for coming home. Tomorrow we'll go to the convent and see Aunt Marguerite. Oh, I'm sure the Mother Superior will let... Veronica, what's that you have? It's a necklace, Mama. See? I found it in Aunt Marguerite's desk. It was in this box. And I think there's a letter in it, too. Let me see that letter. I'm sorry, Mama. No, no, no. I... It, it's all right, dear. Just give it to me. Wait for me, Marguerite. This little necklace will say I have always loved you. When I come home, I will ask your father for your hand in marriage. William. Mama, what is it? What does it say? It... It's nothing, darling. Nothing at all. Marianne, what's wrong, dear? Is it Marguerite? You've heard from her? Yes, I've heard from her. Tomorrow she is to become a nun. It would seem we arrived just in time, William. I... I found this letter. Here, read it. It was written a long time ago, Marianne. You loved Marguerite. You loved her. But that's all past now. When you wrote my father, you lied. You loved my sister. But you sent for me. Why? I... I'd hoped you'd never have reason to ask that question. The letter to your father, I... Well, I wrote your name by accident instead of Marguerite's. By accident? Then our whole marriage has just been a slip of the pen. Marianne, I... Does she know? Does Marguerite know of your... your accident? She knows nothing. I never told a living soul. 
No. No, that's not quite true. I told Ty. I had to tell him. Ty? Ty knew that the only reason you... Oh, of course he knew. You would never have married me if he hadn't forced you into it. Would you, William? Would you? I'm the Mother Superior, Mrs. Ozan. Your sister is expecting you. You'll find her there in the convent yard. Thank you. Marguerite. Marguerite. Oh, my dear. My Marianne. But your note yesterday, you said you would bring William with you and Veronica. I had to see you alone. Marguerite, I... I found the letter William had sent you with a necklace. Oh, my poor dear. I should have destroyed that letter long ago. But don't you understand? It was you William wanted to come to New Zealand. But when he wrote Father, he put in my name by mistake. Oh, Marguerite, don't you hear me? Don't you realize what I'm saying? I hear you, Marianne. I knew you were in love with him. I fought you for him. And I always thought that I'd won him fairly. But Marguerite, he's never loved anyone but you. Was it just an accident that you found that letter? Perhaps there is less chance in life than we realize. Perhaps it was intended to bring out the truth at no, last. When I think of what your life has been, the heartbreak... Do I look like a heartbroken woman? You're becoming a nun because William married me. Well, when you went away to marry him, there was nothing left for me, nothing. It was even worse after Papa and Mama died. I came here in complete despair. But here, I found another life. Marguerite. Can you ever forgive me? There is no question of forgiveness. There is nothing to forgive. Mrs. Ozan, your husband is here. He wishes to see you. He loves you. I'll send him to you. No. Just tell William that I've outgrown the young, selfish love of a girl in her teens. That I've found here what I've been searching for all my life. Marguerite. Tell him this is the way everything was meant to be. And if I once was unhappy, today I am supremely happy. Not because I've given something, but because I have been given everything. Tell him, Marianne, and then pray for me, that I may be worthy as you are worthy. I had to find you before I see Marguerite. She doesn't want to see you. Then I'll wait until she will see me. I've come to tell her that, much as I loved her once, my love is now only for my wife. What kind of love, William? Something manufactured out of your sense of duty? Oh, it would be an unhappy world if the only kind of love was the love of youth. You're quite right, Marianne. I didn't love you when I married you. But I love you now as I never thought I could love anyone. But I can't make you believe that any more than I could stop loving you. Why do I believe you, William? Where's all the courage I thought I had? And perhaps you've given it to me, so that I can face Marguerite and tell her the truth. And so that you'll know that all there is in life for me is you. There's no need to tell her, William. She knows. You... You're praying. She's giving herself to God. As God has given us to each other. Our stars will return for their curtain calls in a moment. But first, Libby has a tip for everyone who loves flowers. And loves a bargain. 
Right now, it's time to plant tulip bulbs. So the makers of Lux Flakes are offering a thrifty shopper's special. A rainbow tulip garden of eight, yes, eight giant prize-winning tulip bulbs. All eight for only 25 cents and the top from a box of Lux Flakes. These healthy Darwin bulbs will grow anywhere, will make wonderful showy borders next spring. You don't even need a garden. If you plant them in pots, they'll bloom in the house this winter. In this special assortment, you get eight different shades, including the famous black tulip, La Noir. It's a real showpiece. This assortment is worth every penny of a dollar and a quarter. But you get it for only 25 cents when you include the top from a box of Lux Flakes. Jot down this address. Lux Garden Club, Los Angeles 54, California. You can order as many sets of bulbs as you like. Just include 25 cents in cash and a Lux Flakes box top for every set of eight bulbs. And hurry, while planting weather is right. This offer expires November 15, 1949. It's good in the United States, Alaska, and Hawaii, and is subject to state and local regulations. Here's the address again. Lux Garden Club, Los Angeles 54, California. Send tonight, sure. The supply of bulbs is limited. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. Curtain time is especially exciting when we can bring back to the footlights such stars as Lana Turner, Van Heflin, and Peter Lawford, and here they are. Lana has recently returned to Hollywood, and we're all delighted to have her back. Thank you, Bill. It's nice to be here. Lana, you know you make even California look prettier. She makes even Hollywood look prettier. Well, it's nice to know you've missed me. Well, of course, Van has been somewhat occupied with that French lady, Madame Bovary. And very lovely, as played in the MGM film by Jennifer Jones. And where was Peter Lawford? Well, he and Walter Pidgeon just made the picture, The Red Danube. The setting is in Vienna, you know. And the picture has its premiere in San Francisco this week. Well, you boys certainly have been getting around while I was away. I think I'll just stick to Bill Keeley and Lux. Hmm. Lux is tops at my house. Well, that's a very wise decision, Lana. And just to show our appreciation, we'll have some Lux flakes in your car when you leave the theater. Well, thank you very much, Bill. And now, won't you tell us about next week's play? It's something to talk about, Lana, because next week's star is the one and only Bing Crosby. We'll present Bing in his great Paramount hit, The Emperor Waltz. And starring with him, we'll have Anne Blythe. This is a delightful story of romance and old Vienna in happier days, and it's full of wonderful songs sung as only Bing Crosby can sing. Well, that'll be a grand show, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, night, and thank you all. (laughs) Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bing Crosby and Anne Blythe in The Emperor Waltz. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Lana Turner, Van Heflin, and Peter Lawford appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of The Doctor and the Girl, starring Glenn Ford and Charles Coburn. Heard in tonight's cast were Joan Banks as Marguerite, Ed Begley as Captain, Bill Johnstone, Doris Lloyd, Herbert Butterfield, Alma Lawton, Janet Scott, Marlene Ames, Howard McNear, Eddie Marr, and Tyler McVeigh. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear The Emperor Waltz, starring Bing Crosby and Anne Blythe. Spry is a new spry, better than ever spry. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Spry makes a better cake, spry makes a better pie. You'll be a better cook when you use spry. Spry in your baking pan, spry in your frying pan. You'll be 
you better cook when you use Spry. For crispy, brown, digestible fried foods, try New Spry. Fried the Spry way, they're delicious. Why? Because New Spry is blander, plays up fresh, natural food flavors. For all you bake and fry, try New Better Than Ever Spry, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. You'll be a better cook when you use Spry. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Emperor Waltz, starring Bing Crosby and Anne Blythe. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same